Something that the Lord placed on my heart, I um, want to talk about with the title, Do Not Quench Your Spirit, Lord. That's First Thessalonians 5 and 19. Paul was talking to the church. First Timothy 1, First Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit expresses, says, expressly says that in later times, some will depart from their faith, from the faith, giving heed to de deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons or doctrines of um, taught by demons. Verse two, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hard iron. Verse three, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So when we talk about a seared conscience, that means that there's no conviction. I say it all the time that, you know, a person is in a very dangerous place when what, you know, the sin they are committing starts to become normal. That means that they're, they're not listening. You know, it's almost like a person that, um, you know, starts to go, uh, you know, robbing and there's, you know, a feeling of like uneasy or anything like that. And then all of a sudden they do it so much that it just becomes like adrenaline or, you know, adrenaline rush. And it's just like oh, a rush to go do that. And it's like, they have no conviction or whatever. And it's like, they, they feel like whatever they do, um, is right. And that's what's happening and with, with the body of Christ. You know, there are some people that are operating under the gift um, and God has removed his spirit, the anointing. What people don't understand is, see, God don't take away the gift. God will take away his spirit because you can't just be doing all, any kind of thing and expect God to pour out his anointing on you. So let's go to the word. So we're talking about, if you look at the story um, in Judges verse uh, chapter 16, talking about Samson. Now, in this particular passage, um, Samson didn't, you know, every time the spirit of the Lord came on him, he got very strong. Um, but at some point he got so comfortable that he didn't even know when the Holy Spirit had gone. So let's look at it. Judges 16 and 16. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily. This is Delilah bothering him with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. I mean, she asked him so much. She asked him four times. She asked him three times and then she kept that bothering him and bothering him and bothering him. And all of a sudden he just said, girl, what, what do you want? And he, he bothered her. Verse 20. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. Shake myself free. Hmm. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. See, there is a time when the Holy Spirit comes on us and we're so like, you know, uh, high or whatever, you know, and you're just feeling like you like, oh, my goodness, like this, this feeling. And, you know, it's just coming on you. But there are times the Holy Spirit can come on you and you don't feel like as high or anything like that. And people not knowing that the spirit of God just left. And, you know, in that point, you know, you know in that case, Samson should have known, OK, this woman kept, you know, bothering me and asking me I should have. You know, learn my lesson, but that's a different um, uh, topic. Um, so they have a seer conscience. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. You know, Proverbs 6, 6 and 19, a false witness that speaks lies and he that so have discord among brethren. You know, and I was sitting in church and, you know, God began to share with me because, you know, they were talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, and they were talking about the flesh and how the flesh does not want to get up and go to church at times. You know, the flesh doesn't want to do the things. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, then God put a spin on it. He said, what if the flesh wanted to go to church to sow discord? Hmm. Amplified version. It says a false witness who breathes out lies, even half truths. And one who spreads discord or rumors among brethren. Galatians 5 and 25. It's an amplified version. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Verse 26. We must not become conceited, challenging, or provoking one another. Or envying one another. Verse 25 of the NIV. I like this version. Since we live by the spirit. Let us keep in step with the spirit. So the Holy Spirit can be telling them. No do this. Do this. You know don't treat them like that. You know it's a. You can be right with the wrong tone. You know it's a way that you can handle something. You know like if you go. Uh, you know if you go out. And you know and the Holy Spirit tells you to help a homeless man. You don't go over there and be like. Man you dumb man. Take this food with your stupid self. Like. Just because you're doing that don't make, you know, sound like, you know, yeah, they hungry, but you ain't supposed to talk to them like that. And some people don't know that. They be like, well, you know, well, I'm doing good. But that's just how, you know, the enemy is and how he uses people, you know. 
Ephesians 4 and 26, it says, be angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun set while you are still angry. Verse 27, um, neither give place to the devil. So what's happening is in the church, some people have have gotten angry and they stayed angry so long that the enemy has a foothold and they don't know it. So imagine them going to church their whole life. And so on Discord, I mean, look at it. Matthew 7, 21, it says, everybody says, Lord, Lord, ain't going to heaven. Verse 22, they're going to say, Lord, but we prophesied in your name, but we cast out demons. And he said, if you had the the the, the, the um, faith to move mountains and everything like this, he's going to say, verse 23, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of, of lawlessness or you workers of iniquity because they, they're not listening. They're sitting there doing it for a selfish gain or whatever like that. <clears throat> and then we go down to verse 30, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, or do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which whom you were sealed for the day whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, outcry, slander, along with every form of malice. Verse 31, it says, be kind and tenderhearted to one another, forgiving each other just as God forgave you. And what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? To cause great distress. And what's happening is, is that people are being... Uh, um offended in the church um and even out you know saying what you can be offended publicly and they're not forgiving anybody and they're not forgiving them or praying for them and they, and they, they begin to get angry and sometimes you can see that person and they get and you get angry again you know saying but this is what's happening and this is why the enemy is so crafty because you know he don't care if you go to church and you never learn anything or like think about it he wants you to go to church and, and sow discord. This is why when it happens and sometimes people offend you and I've been, you know, saying um, we talk about like persecution and stuff like that. But you got to pray for certain people because sometimes they just don't know any better, you know. But this is why we got to sit here and pray for people because they you know some of them clearly don't know that they're sitting here doing this. And like I said, again, God does not take away the gift. He removes his anointing. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't be doing all of that and then God is going to give you anointing. So what's happening is just like Samson, Samson didn't know the spirit of God had left him. And that's what's happening with some people because they're still operating with the gift that they feel that they did that, 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 um, that they don't even know that God's spirit has left. I remember I was at a, a pastor's anniversary um, and the preacher was preaching and he said, the Holy Spirit is at the door waiting to come in. And it just hit me. It was just so profound, like, you know, that the Holy Spirit is waiting to come into church. And that's why we have so many people that, you know, claim they're Christians, but ain't, lis ain't, ain't listening to God's spirit. Because there's two types of Christians. There are the ones that are led by the, the flesh, which is carnal minded, which is definitely there are ones that are led by the spirit, which is life. You know what I'm saying? And so when you have carnal minded Christians, you know, we say people that are mean or something like that. Because what happens is, is if you call yourself a man or woman of God and, you know, sometimes we can, if the Bible says we can offend people and not, not, you know, not on purpose. But if you wrong somebody, the Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, you need to go back and apologize. You need to say something like this. And it doesn't make the other person right or anything like that, because it could be a two-way fold. You know, you offended them, they offended you. But that's where God is trying to, you know, con con convict you and stuff like that. And when there is no conviction, a person is in a very dangerous place. That's why we can see some people, you know, they doing all types of stuff in this world. And you like, how does that make any sense? You know what I'm saying? But this is why we have to pray for individuals when we do, you know, uh, face that persecution. Because we have to pray for them because they're, they're not knowingly. And just looking at Samson, you know, he said, I'm going to shake myself free. He thought he thought it was him. It was God's spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. He was a strong man, but he wasn't that strong to just break ropes, you know, just, just like that. And so when they when they did that, when they cut his hair, I mean, look what happened. So this is why, you know, you know, we can see certain people act in certain ways because they don't they don't know any better. And I had saw a post and they were sharing with, you know, how they had to unfollow some saints or whatever like that. And. You, you know, you might have to because there are some people that are chronic complainers that they just, you know, said been talking about that and they're just fleshy led. And so the, the emotion anger, it's a dangerous emotion, but it was given to us to do something positive. You know, if you get mad and you want to do something positive, that's what it's supposed to do. That's why God said, don't don't stay mad too long. You know, like if you ask somebody for a ride and they keep doing you wrong, you know, what I'm saying or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're supposed to be like, you know what? You're supposed to take that anger and go get your own vehicle. 
You know, go get your license and do what you got to do. That's what you're supposed to do. So maybe I'll talk about that in another segment because we're coming up on 10 minutes. So um, I just wanted to say that, you know, pray for those individuals because God said, whatever you do in secret, I reward you openly. Pray for these people because they don't even know. And when you go into church, sometimes there are people that are preaching under the gift with no anointing. Just like Dr. Carletta Vaughn said, where's the power? Where's where's the miracles? Some people are just preaching because they have the gift and the gift, you know, people can get up and be like, oh, my God, this is a great sermon or whatever like that. But the anointing breaks yokes. There's there is there is no spirit or some barely even listen to the Holy Spirit. They want they want, they, you know, they want to condense the Holy Spirit to a certain time frame or whatever like that. But man, so just wanted to get that out there. Love y'all. God bless.